I have been asked to rebuild the air suspension on the rear of an old C10. A simple request, except the truck is on jack stands 20 miles away from my garage. Welcome to a short series I'm going to call Long Distance Fab. Hey Garage Fabbers, it's Man Candy here on my way to my buddy Keith's house on the other side of Las Vegas. Keith has a beautiful 1971 Chevy C10 with a fully custom chassis, air suspension, and an LS drivetrain. My first major contribution to the truck was a custom bed after the air suspension was already done. Yep, your boy Man Candy, the YouTube air suspension guy, did sheet metal work and had nothing to do with the air suspension. Well, Keith ain't so happy with his air suspension. His two main concerns are a rough ride and not enough lift. When he got the truck back from his air suspension dude, his 22 inch wheels were stuck behind the bed sides. Meaning if he got a flat, he'd have to remove the bed or unbolt his shocks and his air springs so the axle would drop down enough to get the wheel out from behind the fenders. When I rebuilt the bed, I made it so that it could tilt in either direction for easier tire changes. That made tire changes possible, but certainly not easy. The bed weighs a bajillion and four pounds, so definitely not ideal. Keith wants to be able to change a flat on the side of the road without the help of four other dudes. Sounds awfully picky, if you ask me. I've been telling Keith I'd help him for over a year now. I told him it'll have to wait until my wife's Mighty Max is done. And then I started a YouTube channel and the progress on Caroline's truck slowed to a crawl. Well, either the guilt got to me or I just got tired of him bringing it up. So here we are. I'm on my way, bro. I got you. Here's the deal though, I still don't have room. So his truck has to stay in his garage. Obviously I can't bring my whole shop to his house. So I'm going to have to drive back and forth throughout the build. And here's the kicker. His house is 20 miles away from my garage. Yay. <laughs> How'd you feel about being the star of a new video? <sighs> uh, the deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are we fixing again? The goal is to give us some travel, get the bags off the axle. Change the ride? Change the ride. So we're going to do two inch, quarter inch wall bars on the top. I have not done this yet, but we're going to put the bags on the upper link bars, which would be kind of neat. These bars stop right here. We're gonna make the bars a little bit longer kind of up here so that the bags will be uh, on the center of the bar so we're not overloading the bags. And we gotta keep enough room for wider wheels in the future. So these bars are going to come away from the frame a little bit. We're gonna go to seven inch, probably slam specialties bags. We only have like eight, I don't remember, eight or nine inches in between there. So we don't have a lot of room. So we're actually going to put the bag right in this area right here. So we have all the room we need right there. We're gonna change the angle of the bars just a little bit. Try to get a little anti-squat out of it. And other than that, gonna be exactly the same thing. Just changing the bags from on the axle to on the bars. And Keith gets to do all the fun work of taking everything apart. I don't wanna do that. My personal goal for this project is to make the least amount of trips possible from my house to Keith's house 20 miles away. I'm going to do that by bringing his truck here to my living room floor. I took a handful of measurements from his garage that will help me draw a section of his frame, actual size, on this cardstock. Once I have his frame with me, I should be able to design the majority of his link bar setup, including link bar length and the link bar tabs for both the frame and the axle. And once that's done, I will have actual size templates that I can cut out and transfer to steel. If everything works out as planned, I'll be able to assemble his entire link bar setup here 
bring the assemblies to his house and simply weld them on in theory. I will be using this side to represent the back of Keith's cab and the bottom of the cardstock as the floor to base everything off of. I've decided to set everything up with a ride height of four inches. So the bottom of the frame will be four inches from the bottom of the cardstock. Starting at 1.5 inches behind the cab, the frame slopes upwards for 24 inches, a total of seven inches. Keith's tires have a total diameter of 29 inches. That puts the axle center at 14.5 inches off the ground. Using that point, I'll draw a three inch circle that matches the diameter of the axle tube. The truck has a rack that holds the air compressors, the valves, and the battery. This rack is 11.75 inches above the bottom of the frame and extends from the back of the cab 16.5 inches. The frame notch shoots up to clear the axle, but that's not going to be important right now. I expect the link bars to be approximately level at a 4 inch ride height, so this will help me position the bushings for the axle side link bar tabs. The upper bushing will be positioned a half inch away from the axle tube to prevent rubbing, and the lower bushing will be 8 inches directly below that. If I connect all the circles on the outer edges, we get to see what the actual axle tabs will look like. This line drawn through the widest part of the axle tube is really important. Without it, the link bar tabs won't slip over the axle tube. I'll put the front bushings a couple inches away from the back of the cab so that the link bar tabs don't touch. The lower bushings will be spaced the same eight inches from the upper bushings because we're making a parallel four link. I've got a problem already though. This puts my bottom bushing below the frame, which means the bushing will contact the ground when the truck lays out. So. I've got to push these up a little bit. I'm going to connect the front link bar tabs to the frame using a piece of two inch square tubing. Now I can finish off the front tabs by connecting all the outer edges like I did in the rear. Here's what the link bars will look like. They will be 35.5 inches long. Let's cut these tabs out and have a look. That's cool, but I got a little ahead of myself. Remember, this is all set up at a four inch ride height, which means if this cardstock truck were to lay out, the upper link bar would hit the compressor rack. Whoops. I'm going to have to get creative. First, let's find out where the upper bushing will end up when the truck fully lays out. If the truck lays out level, the frame can drop four inches. But did you know that if you drop the rear suspension first, the rear axle can actually push up more than four inches. So I'm going to take this into account and estimate that the upper bushing could possibly go up an additional 1.5 inches. Here's the new location of the upper bushings. If you haven't seen Suspension Basics Episode 4, where we talk about unique shaped link bars, go check it out because now we're doing it in real life. After drawing it out, I'll use the angle finder to determine what this angle is. I will need to bend my upper link bar to 155 degrees. Let's get to work. We'll start by turning our cardboard templates into wooden templates. Normally, I shrink my templates so that the final piece is the correct size after tracing it with a plasma torch. But this time, I don't mind if my tabs are a little larger. tabs cut out, it's time to move on to creating link bars. Link bars are measured from the center of one bolt to the center of the other. So I'm going to make a jig out of some angle iron by simply drilling holes 35.5 inches apart. Both the upper and lower link bars will be the same length even though the upper bars are bent. Confusing? It'll make sense shortly. I 
have decided that the upper link bars need to have a 155 degree bend in them in order to keep them from hitting Keith's compressor rack as the truck airs out. I was just gonna do it, but I decided to do a quick how-to on angling bars. It's super simple, but honestly, I just figured out how to do it myself not that long ago. The only thing you really need to remember is that a full circle is 360 degrees. Everything else can be figured out with some simple math. So if 360 degrees is a complete circle, half of that is 180 degrees. That's from here to here. Fun fact, tubing is already at 180 degrees. All of our math is going to be based off of that 180 degrees. Once you know that, it's simple addition and subtraction. I need to create a 155 degree angle. And I'm going to do that by cutting notches out of the tubing and then kicking it up. So how big does notch need to be in order to create a 155 degree angle? And it's this part that I really only learned in the last several years. The notch we need is the same angle that this tubing will kick up in the end. And it just takes simple math to figure that out. So if we're starting with 180 degrees and I need a 155 degree angle, 180 minus 155 gives us 25 degrees. This bar is going to kick up 25 degrees. That 25 degrees is the same size as the notch that we're going to take out of these pieces of tubing. There's a couple ways of cutting that notch, but only one right way. I've started with lines that are at 90 degrees of the tubing. This is where the tube will bend. I could find 25 degrees and draw a line and cut this notch out. If I cut this notch out, I will have a 155 degree angle in the tubing. The problem with that though, is that since this line is straight and this line is angled, this line is a bit shorter than this line. And when I bend it, these two pieces will not meet nicely. If I were to have taken the entire 25 degrees on just one side, what happens when you bend it is you get this huge gap right there. Super ugly. So in order to make these two ends meet properly, I need to take equal amount out of each side of this center line. So this 25 degree angle is not going to work. So what I actually need to do is split up that 25 degrees on each side of this line by cutting that angle in half. Half of 25 degrees is 12 and a half. So I'm actually going to draw one line at 12 and a half, draw another line at 12 and a half on the other side. And I now have the 25 degree wedge that I'm gonna cut out that will give me 155 degrees. Another really important thing with angling tubes with the notch method is that these marks have to be in the exact same spot on the other side so that when you bend it, you don't have issues with the pieces of metal joining properly. And I did a video with this fancy tool that I created just for that. I'll link it somewhere right around here. Go check that out. Super easy to make, but a big help. I'll take it. The shot is just to show that the angle of the piece that I removed equals the amount that the bar had to bend up. This is quarter inch thick metal, so in order to get good penetration all the way to the center when I'm welding this back together, I have to bevel these edges with a cutoff wheel.
that the bars are bent, I can install the link bar end. Because this is the measurement that matters. side of the C10 4 link assembled on my bench so that I can see how everything looks and how it operates and so far I'm really happy with it. It's far from done but I'm getting nervous. This entire thing has been designed and built without the presence of the truck so I honestly don't even know if this fits. Everything was based off of measurements and cardboard. The square tubing was cut and welded at an angle so that it wouldn't contact Keith's compressor rack as it moves. I still want to create some fish plates and some support gussets underneath, but before I do that, I think I should bring this across town and make sure everything looks okay. Cutting off those fish plates and the support gussets will be a lot more work than just simply driving a few miles to the other side of the city. Also, while I'm there, I wanna see if I can determine where the air springs will be mounted so that I can build some brackets for that as well. This episode of Long Distance Fab will be continued. Oh, don't you hate that? Until then, my friends, keep moving forward. Oh, and Happy New Year. 2023 is going to be your year. <laughs>